Welcome back to my channel. I'm Trayman, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a review for The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. Let's talk about it. Longtime viewers of the channel might know that I am very much into the cozy fantasy genre. I fell in love with Legends and Lattes. I read the sequel book, Bookshops and Bone Dust. I haven't done a dedicated review for either of those books, I don't believe. Maybe that should be a Treasure Tomes episode that I put together. I've often, in my shorts and other things, talked about my love for this genre and love for cozy fantasy, low stakes fantasy. So when I read the synopsis of The Spell Shop, I knew I had to pick it up. The Spell Shop follows Kiela, a magic librarian. Not that she's magic, at least not initially, but she is a librarian for a magical library and has all these magical books around her. The inciting incident at the very beginning is there's actually a revolution, a, a coup against the emperor or king or however they're terming it in this book, and uh, the library is set on fire. So Kiela has to very quickly, with the help of her sentient spider plant, Kaz, uh, gather up as many books as she can, put them on a boat, and then just take off and get out of the capital. Kiela decides to return to her parents' hometown. There's a lot made about her parents' need for escaping the town and getting to the city, and then Kiela's need for escaping the city and getting back to the town. A point that I don't think is explored as much as it probably should have been. There's a lot to love about this book. Kiela is a librarian. She is socially awkward. She has a lot of anxiety about strangers and new situations. And those all play really well within the narrative. I also really like Kaz. He's this sentient plant, but you get a lot of his backstory in this book and you really start to feel for him as this character who was created not because of anything any desire to be a real or alive and his need for connection with others how he and Kiela have this very special bond I liked the two of them together a lot they are probably the two characters that play off each other in the most fun ways of course when she arrives in town her neighbor Bryn comes by and he is a very thoughtful helpful person very nice to her she's initially very suspicious, but a romance starts to build between the two of them. Yella notices that her new village is being ravaged by magical storms. Magical animals are not reproducing. The plants are all dying. And it all has to do with the way magic works in this world. So the capital is working a lot of magic to keep the weather nice and to keep everything even and, and pleasant. And that sucks energy from the surrounding areas and they're all terrible apparently um, it used to be that the emperor would send out people to the uh, islands the ancillary islands and they'll they would work magic to kind of course correct but that's not happened for a while but by the time kiela gets to her hometown it's a mess and she decides that she's going to open up a jam shop because they don't have jam and she has all the ingredients for that but also she's going to sell these remedies that she's going to try to convince everybody are folk remedies in an effort to kind of help work magic it's important to remember kiela is not a magician she is not a wizard. She doesn't actually know how to use any of this magic, but she does know how to read, and she has a number of these magical tomes. And so between her and Kaz working together, they manage to put together a few things that start healing the plants and, and doing some other things. It's all very cute. Uh, she's very nervous about people finding out that she's using magic because it could expose her. Generally, I liked the flow of the book. It was very fun. It was very refreshing. It was very calm, but there are a couple of issues that just stop it from being as strong as some of the other cozy fantasies that I've read. The first minor issue is the stakes. Generally in cozy fantasy, it's like with Legends and Lattes, for example, it's like, I want to make a cozy cafe and it's 
hard to get people to come in and work and I've got to find someone to bake goods and things like that. It's all very low level issues and it does have like a larger looming problem in the background, which is what I think this was trying to go for. But the opening scene is literally a library on fire in the middle of a coup. And the constant threat is that a full on military invasion is going to happen on her island if they find out that she's a rogue wizard. Those are not low stakes. It's like a buster call in One Piece. And the things they describe as the repercussions for dabbling in magic when you're not supposed to are pretty extreme and not, you know, a pleasant, let's not slap on the wrist, you know, it's not a pleasant thing. And it's not just jail time either. So that's one place where I think it missteps. The other is just with conflict. So this is going to sound a little contradictory, but I want the conflict to be low stakes as in if she is trying to do something like set up her shop and like some things go bad oh the jam went bad and she has to figure out how to seal it properly to make sure it lasts longer that would be the kind of thing that i'm looking for right there should still be some conflict in the story but the issue is a lot of the low level conflict like the day-to-day -day things she's doing don't end up being conflict at all initially as she's learning how to do magic she makes some mistakes she accidentally creates life in one case or makes a tree that can sing these are always treated as a potential looming threat but for the in the moment and in the course of the story they're actually good things like the sentient cactus that she creates called meep is just a cute character that helps out in a number of ways kiela is constantly freaking out and worried that she is going to be found out and that her magic is not going to work and that there's going to be some sort of major repercussion for what she's doing and really until the very end there isn't even when they get to a point where it seems like someone from the capital is there and they are going to expose her, that ends up not being true and not happening. And then they basically run that plot again with another person coming in and from the capital and also not doing what she's afraid of. It's a little bit too much yes or yes and when talking about does the conflict resolve in a given chapter? So, yes is boring. We want more like, no, it doesn't work. Or no, but this positive thing happens. Or no, and furthermore, this other bad thing happens. Like, things should escalate a little bit, even in a cozy fantasy. But, again... I want the stakes to be low. I want the the possibility of failure, like what goes wrong with her screwing something up to be not a terrible thing, but I do want it to be a thing. I don't feel like I'm explaining myself well, but it felt like there were just too many wins in this, too many times where she, the only real conflict was in her mind, in Kiela's mind, that something was gonna go horribly wrong and then it didn't and everything was actually perfectly fine and great and everybody loves her. That was my first complaint. Romance suffers from a similar problem in that this is less of a case of will they, won't they, and more of a case of when are they going to do it and just stop this nonsense? They clearly both are interested in each other. Even Kiela, with her social anxiety, recognizes that uh, Bryn is beautiful and smart and very handy and nice to her and, you know, is basically like a perfect person, which is another issue. The characterization here does not feel very strong. It doesn't. Bryn, in particular, does not seem like a well-rounded character. He has a very specific, tragic backstory kind of thing as to like how he got where he is today and how, what, how, why his attitude is the way it is. But there's no neg negative aspect of his personality. There is some talk by one of the 
ancillary characters about how Kiela shouldn't just get together with him because he's nice. That's not a good basis for a relationship, which I did appreciate. But the fact that he has no negative qualities to speak of is a bit of a detriment. And the relationship building, again, seemed conflict free. Should be a little bit of like a give and take, a little bit of pull and push, and it wasn't in this book. I know, I, I'm sounding completely, you know, ridiculous with saying like, oh, this conflict is too much, but this conflict is too little. But cozy fantasy should not mean no stakes. It should not mean that things never go bad for a character. It should mean that there are Things that could go bad, but they're easily to recover from. A lot of Legends and Lattes deals with building the actual tavern that she wants to create and the problems associated with that. And so there are issues with, you know, getting materials and finding people and personality conflicts. Even the relationship in that one is a little more tense because both sides, I think, are reluctant to enter into something and there is more depth to those characters all that being said it's still very cute it's still very readable i do feel like the last third of the book drags a little bit only because they rehash a plot twice as like a climax so a conflict builds i thought was going to be the primary conflict of the story and then it got to a point where it's like this clearly isn't going to be the last conflict because there's too much book left. It was, again, wrapped up pretty easily and without too much fuss and like pushback. It seemed a little bit too convenient. Then we basically ran that plot again, ran that ending again with a different character and a little bit more serious than the first time. It was a really odd choice. I still thought Kiela was fun. I still liked the cozy vibes. It was a nice, refreshing change of pace for me, and it ended up at a 3.5 stars, which I rounded up to a 4. Kiela, being a bookworm, being a little socially awkward, is someone that I could identify with. Her reluctance to do things with strangers and to like go into town, it was very uncomfortable for her. That was all good. I liked her character. Kaz was fun. The two of them together were very fun, and seeing them initially struggle with the magic was interesting. Learning a little bit about how this world's magic worked was very captivating and I liked it quite a bit. For a few fun set pieces along the way as well, I really liked the forest guardians that showed up and the mysticism surrounding them. But because of the weak ending and because of the lack of any stakes, not just low stakes, but really the lack of any real conflict within the story, I, I couldn't get five stars. As much as I enjoyed reading it, as, as much as I was vibing with it, and it was cozy and fun as I was reading it, when I finished it up and I looked back at the story and really thought about it, I couldn't help but think it was a little bit too easy, a little bit too simple. Nevertheless, I would recommend it. It's a four out of five star. I think if you enjoy Cozy Fantasy, you'll enjoy the ride here. You'll like the characters. You'll vibe with the atmosphere and the, you know, getting the jam shop together and just like trying your best to, to garden with magic and try to keep it secret from your neighbors. That was all very fun. So yeah, I think if you like Legends and Lattes, if you like these cozy fantasy stories, you should pick this up. There's also a sequel coming out in July of next year, which works off of a character that is mentioned a couple of times in this book, but is like tangentially related to anything going on here. So it'll be a completely different story, which I think could be a lot of fun. I do want to return to this world. I do want to see another character. I'm just hoping that the next story involves a little bit more of that low stakes conflict 
and beefs up the characters a little bit more. And that's gonna do it for this review. I hope your reading journey is going well. I hope you're finding things that are cozy or scary or just stress inducing, if that's what you're into, whatever. Read what makes you happy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Apparently the number of subscribers who hit the thumbs up button is the current like trend within the YouTube algorithm. So please hit the thumbs up. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.